My great grandmother was born during World War I, and she was with me from my very first day when I came home in August of 2000. Growing up, I can remember her smile, making me laugh, feeling her love, and her amazing cooking. She was an old world culinary artist, and her enchiladas were off the hook. <laughs> a few years ago, I moved to a different city. And in order to keep in touch with her, I showed her how to use our iPad so she could Skype. She thought the iPad was only for playing casino games and Candy Crush. <laughs> But later, I was able to show her how to email, shop, surf the internet, and look up medical information, all to help improve her quality of life. Where I live now, there is a high population of senior citizens, and I've noticed them in the doctor's office, standing in grocery lines, and even at the library, struggling with their mobile devices. I found that 60% of senior citizens are connected online today, but many continue to feel that they are just too old to learn, or that computers and smart devices are too complicated or expensive. The availability for quality smart device training for seniors is very limited, Some courses are too expensive, while others require the seniors to travel, and very few offer the one-on-one -on -one assistance seniors need. So I wondered if I could create a solution where seniors could learn to use smart technology to collect, connect with their loved ones, like my grandmother and I did. So I began a nonprofit where teens who are mobile device experts, and I know you guys know this because you're always like, get off your phones. <laughs> can volunteer to provide training for seniors. But after giving a few classes, we ran into some challenges. In my classes, we have served almost every type of senior, some with engineering degrees, business owners, homemakers, veterans, and even those with disabilities. I needed to improve how to teach this diverse group with the wide age range between 55 which is pretty young, to 85. There was a need to create a system that could handle these challenges. And so I wondered, there are many seniors that continue to feel that, that, that computer and internet technology has grown so fast that they can't handle it anymore. They're like, whoa, slow down. I can't be using this phone. The computer and internet technology boomed and sped right past them. But for some, they were open to change and were able to learn to use these technologies. And it is this mindset that has helped them overcome resistance to change. Because if your mind is closed, you won't change. The emotions responsible for resistance to change are fear, trust, frustration, doubt, and denial. I had a married senior couple walk into one of our classes, wanting to learn to use a new smartphone they just purchased. Well, at least the wife Doris was. The husband Henry mentioned he wanted nothing to do with our class. He said, no way, Jose. <laughs> Henry said he didn't like computers or smart devices. To overcome Henry's resistance to change, his doubt and denial towards technology needed to be improved. Why? First, he denied that smart technology could improve his life. I use it every single day. I am like so obsessed with my phone. I'm using Chromebooks every day. I can never get off my phone. And second, he was doubtful and didn't know where to start. And here we have a bus, representing the vehicle for learning and change. In order for the bus to depart, we need all emotions on board. Henry needed help in overcoming his resistance to change. And my job was to provide him two things. One, to get his doubt on board, Henry needed a learning path that he accepted. And second, 
to get his denial on board, Henry's needs or interests needed to be met. The fact is, everyone will resist change at some point in their lives. For some of us, it's giving a speech. <laughs> Others, it's learning to dance or even singing. There was a need to create a system that could handle these challenges and provide quality training to help seniors cross the digital divide. So I developed a five-step instructional tool that would also help with overcoming resistance to change. I call it the AEIOU method. You know, like the vowels? <laughs> A stands for ask. We get to know our students personally, their computing background, and what they're interested in learning. By better understanding their resistance to change, we can do, reduce their frustration. E stands for explain. To reduce doubt, we provide an overview of what we are going to teach so seniors know what to expect. I stands for invite. We build trust by answering questions, concerns, and interests. O stands for one-on-one. -on -one. To reduce fear, we use methods found in the hospitality industry, and the seniors really love this. And finally, U stands for understand. To reduce denial, we match learning with their personal interests or needs. So back to Henry and his resistance to change. After sitting back and watching his wife learning to use her smartphone, his doubt and denial decreased. After asking Henry a few questions, we discovered his personal interests and found that online banking was something that he wanted to learn. Henry was so surprised that smart technology could be used for so many things. And he loved the tablet that we loaned him so much that he actually wanted to buy one for himself. Or steal ours, I'm not sure. <laughs> so now, doubt and denial are on board and ready to head down the path of learning and change. The results have been amazing. Teens love the experience because they are able to learn to teach, speak in public, have meaningful experiences with seniors, and most importantly, bridge the intergenerational gap. Seniors love the one-on-one -on -one attention and assistance that they receive from teens, a group they thought they had nothing in common with. One of our students said that she had learned more in one hour of our training than in the last 15 years combined. That's about as old as me. <laughs> the AEIOU program is proving to be successful with teens and seniors in overcoming resistance to change. Wouldn't the world be a better place if we could all bridge the digital divide together? I hope you find this an idea worth reverberating. Thank you.